Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Seattle. A little better and more scenic than the hills of the Midwest where we're usually from. I'm super pumped because obviously the iPhone 13 is here and this is literally my first day with the 13 Pro Max. Uh, so the majority of this video is going to be everything stock, what you can get out of the phone itself just with the glass, the stock camera app, and yeah, just my kind of first 24 hour thoughts using the phone, using the camera. Also, let me know what you guys think about the audio. This is my first time I picked up the Sennheiser MK440 and it's a stereo mic, it looks pretty sweet. And it's supposed to pick up the atmosphere pretty well and also my voice, so give it a thumbs up if you think the audio sounds good. Also, if I sound nervous, I hate talking in public. I don't know how vloggers do it. I'm gonna try and make this video good anyway, so it's cool. All right, so after playing around for cinematic mode, sorry, my focus is super shallow. It has a point, I'll get there in a minute. After playing around with the phone for the first couple of minutes, uh, cinematic mode is actually looking pretty cool. I believe I saw a tweet earlier today from Patrick Tommaso talking about um, you know, a lot of pro users, they may use it once and then realize it's not perfect and never use it again. But for a lot of people, as long as they learn to use it properly and learn its strengths and weaknesses, just like every single camera has, it actually could be a really useful tool. And immediately, I agree. Now, I've been testing it both on some people as well as uh, just kind of random objects and the random non-human objects is a total hit or miss. It's not really made for it yet. It's kind of specifically looking towards faces. So even if you're focused on your hand or a stick on the ground, as soon as you pan around and get someone's face in the general framing, it's gonna immediately focus rack to that uh, person. So if you're looking for a nice depth of field for objects or non-human things, um, it's gonna be pretty rough until I'm sure a software update will come around or we may have to wait till like iOS 16 for that to be more of a thing. So just to kind of give you a view of what it looks like compared to a cinema camera, I've set my IRIX 15 millimeter to T2.6, uh, which is the widest open it can go to give somewhat of a blurred background. And then what I'll do is go into cinematic mode on the phone. Now I'm looking at the iPhone. That's what it looks like with cinematic mode turned on. And this is what a real lens and depth of field uh, from hardware looks like. Is it good, bad? I don't know yet because I'm recording it, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. So one issue that has been pretty consistent in almost every phone I test is when playing around with slow motion, I'd really love to see some dynamic range be added because it still is pretty poor and all the focus is on the new cinematic mode and you know the 4K 60 being even better and the HDR Dolby Vision and all that stuff. But anytime you switch to slow motion and get 120 or 240, the dynamic range kind of just goes out the window. And as someone who loves slow motion, as I think a lot of people do, would love to see uh, better results with that. So one thing that I really thought would bother me about cinematic mode was the fact that it was only 1080p 30fps. The 30fps is still kind of bugging me, should be 24. While I'm sure I will enjoy it being upscaled to 4K probably next year or something, one thing I'm actually happy about is that it has a softer look, at least on the phone. Maybe it'll change on the computer. I'll put a text thing right here if it is. It looks like during the post-processing process, they're doing less sharpening and less of that kind of clarity, extra crazy detail in every pixel. Everyone's skin kind of looks softer. Granted, a lot of these clips are of my like babies who have literally baby soft skin. But I don't know, what do you guys think? To me, it just looks like when I go from the regular 4K mode, it's, everything is crazy sharp, crazy crystal clear. Even when you get the natural depth of field because of the larger sensor in 4K mode, when you get up close to someone, you get a decent, nice fall off, but then the actual skin is still very, very, very sharpened. Looks good. I mean, they're just two different styles, but I definitely think the cinematic mode has that softer, more cinematic feel to it. But what do you guys think? Let me know. So I think for now, I'll be wrapping up on this beach and hopefully going to find somewhere else cool to shoot. Let's go. I know a lot of you were asking, is the lens flaring still an issue? Unfortunately, yes. One of my biggest complaints, if not the biggest complaint of last year's iPhone, unfortunately it is continuing because if I pull up the phone here, you see it? You can see them right there. 
and building. Those are the very ugly UFO-like lens flares showing up from that street light. You know, just for kicks, does cinematic mode make any difference? Nope, none whatsoever. All right, so let's talk about this macro mode. So this works in both photo and video and essentially anytime you get super close to something, it automatically switches to the ultra wide camera or obviously if you're in the ultra wide camera, you can get within like a couple millimeters of an object and you can get some really cool macro shots. It actually looks pretty impressive and as I said in my last video before I even had the phone where I guessed it was kind of like the Laowa 24 millimeter probe lens, I definitely can see people kind of getting used to getting creative shots like that where you're really up close to something but it's still a wide angle so you can see a lot of the environment. And a lot of this phone, cinematic mode, the uh, macro stuff is almost like the best way to play around and test. So that way, if you end up kind of growing through the ranks, maybe this is your first like real camera phone or just camera in general. Now, when you work your way up to using bigger cinema cameras and more specialty lenses and all this stuff. So a lot of the features on this phone are just great ways to get really good at a lot of the filmmaking techniques, even if the final results aren't necessarily going to end up, um, you know, on the big screen or whatever. So really cool. I really hope this microphone sounds good because there is a lot of city noise um, and I don't have the windscreen for it because it didn't come with that apparently. So I wanted to share a couple thoughts of what I hope to see in future software updates because um, they're pretty much all software. There's not really too many hardware critiques I has, I has at, I have as of now. So I'm actually way more of a fan of cinematic mode than I originally thought. Yes, it is not perfect. If you're using it for professional work, you really have to practice kind of the strengths and weaknesses of it because it can definitely be, no pun intended, rough around the edges. Thank you, Streetlight. It's giving me a hair light. Yeah, definitely you can see the software going on, especially around hair or as it switches subjects. The focus pulls are definitely pretty smooth, I would say. And so that's been really nice. Basically what I'm asking for is them to finally release a pro video mode inside of the stock camera app. Or, and I don't know if this is already opened up, but if third party apps like Filmic Pro or Beast Cam basically have access for the cinematic mode to be turned on, but still shoot in maybe log or different bit rates or have those manual focus sliders to kind of change the depth of field and change the focus plane manually rather than just scanning for faces. Because there were so many times where I wasn't filming a person, but an object and I was like, oh, this would look so cool to have this in focus in the background blurred out, but you kind of just have to try and trick the cinematic mode or just hope that it focuses on that thing. But then again, the edges are really rough because it's looking for a person. This is a brand new feature. They have a lot of room to grow and I hope they grow it pretty quick. Um, but odds are we're probably gonna have to wait for iOS 16 to see any of these major sort of advanced whatevers. It has been nearly 24 hours with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, the day went by super quick, so I was hoping to get to a bunch more locations, but tomorrow we're going hiking. Um, I'm here for a whole week, so actually we're gonna get a ton of locations in. So if you wanna see a more long-term review that's gonna be one of my more traditional in-depth camera reviews, then definitely get subscribed because that should come out by the end of this coming week. But for now, the sun is setting, so I'm actually just gonna go around and do something that I pretty much never do, which is like city-style photographs and sample clips. I also can't even fully use the phone yet because it's still restoring, and anyone who's done an iCloud restore knows it can take a while, and I'm on hotel Wi-Fi for the next week. And by the way, I know it's something that, like, the design looks the exact same online, but when you compare them in person to my 12 Pro Max, lenses and what is behind them, the sensors, are significantly bigger. And so I believe on the wide angle lens, it's supposed to be like two times better low light footage and like 90% better in the ultra wide, so we'll see. But other than that, uh, it's a pretty typical iPhone experience. Just to touch upon the ProMotion display, I've never really cared for 120 hertz displays, been using them on whatever Android devices for the past year. Um, don't get me wrong, 
long. It's nice if you've been wishing for 120 hertz on an iPhone, it's here and it feels very fluid and it is very quick. It's also starting to get quite uh, dark out here. There's the true tone. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, so overall, I'm definitely enjoying the first 24 hours of this phone. Like I said, if you want to see more in-depth stuff that's going to come later this week, follow me on Instagram, Twitter to see some probably more high-res versions of the photos that I post. And other than that, if you have questions about the phone, leave them in the comments down below, and I'll make sure to answer them in the next video. But for now, I'm going to go enjoy Seattle again. I said it before, I don't know how you vloggers do this every time a person walks by my social anxiety goes into full gear. Yeah, if I sound weird, that's why. Anyway, have a good night, everybody.